Let me tell you the story of Elena. Elena, freshly graduated from HEC Lausanne, decided to create a, a, a slow fashion company. What does that mean? A locally produced clothes, ethical work condition, and a smaller supply chain. While her um, sales were increasing, she hired two new team members, somebody to assist her in the sales, and somebody to do the community management. When collaborating with these two people, she noticed that the, the, the salesperson was focusing on the fashion aspects on the clothes, whereas the community manager was only looking at the ethical aspects of the clothes. Both of them forgetting other key aspects of the whole organization. So she decided to talk to them, and during the talk, what she uncovered is that the three people had different ideas of what the organization perspective was. Organizational identity is key for other startups and other small companies. Why is that? Because what happened in LNS company can happen anywhere. And it's the case when you have different founders that come from different backgrounds and perspective and all have different purposes in mind. They focus on what they have to deliver, the product or service, and maybe forget the, the identity or, or the bigger picture on their daily operations. They might have a bigger purpose than just selling, and they have to, in 2019, um, communicate on social media, and to do that, they have to have a clear identity. So how can we help them and support them in collaborating to find a better and a clearer um, identity. What we did with my team of co-authors, who are uh, partly in the room, is that we looked at three existing collaborative tools that have proven useful in the last decade. We look at the business model canvas, the value proposition canvas, and the team alignment map. These tools are tools that teams gather around to communicate, collaborate, and strategize on different topics. What we found is three different elements, three different rules that one has to follow when designing such tools. The first one is that these tools should be um, justified with academic literature and concepts that exist somewhere. The second is that they should be visually appealing and easy enough for everybody to understand. And the third one is that the user should be guided in how to use them. So, I apply these things to organizational identity, and I'll illustrate you how. I looked into the organizational identity literature, and I found 24 elements that could define the topic, but we found something that we can call semantic confusion. This happens when two authors or two people say the same term, use the same term to talk about two different things, or on the other way, say different terms to talk about the same thing. We decided to sort that and to try to um, diminish that, and we put a model together that I'm presenting here. First, on the left side, you have the identity elements of the organization, such as the vision, which is the purpose of the company, where it wants to go, the culture, which is the company's belief in their daily operations, and the image, which is what the company wants to project. Then the company has to decide to whom they're talking about these elements. They have different stakeholders with whom they talk, may it be official, internal, such as employees, or external, such as consumers. To each of these, customers, of these stakeholders, they will communicate through different channels of communications. And lastly, we've also accounted for something that's called noise that comes from the theories of communication. This is things that are uncontrolled, that people say about you without you being able to control them. I told you the second rule was that this, this is not okay for people to use. We have to make it visually compelling. So we tried to do this. We, we drew um, um, empty spaces where people could strategize, put post-it notes and, and discuss these elements. And we tried this with different uh, users and we found out that these were not the most effective and came out with the, with the version that we're using now, which is the identity communication map. I told you the third rule was that we need to guide users in how to use it. So I'm gonna guide you through how to use this. Let's say you're Elena and you have a company. Here, you'll put your vision, your purpose, 
she wants a um, slow fashion company, so she wants to um, maybe, uh, I told you, be ethical and so on. The image that she wants to project um, can be about all these elements that I've told you being ethical, environmental, friendly, um, um, uh, respecting the co-workers, and these are also some of the values that she's gonna put here. Then she's gonna look at all the different stakeholders to whom she talks, maybe her suppliers, her customers, or different people um, she has to interact with, and then she look every medium of communication that she uses to talk to these people. She can also account for the noise, which is something that is uncontrolled, something that other people are saying about the organization. Once all of this is done, she can even measure how she's perceived, how the company is perceived, and repeat the whole process. Going back to Elena, when she found out that she had a problem with her organizational identity, she could have hired a marketing company to help her with it. But by using the tool, what she found out is that not only she could save money and time, but also she could define more clearly and more effectively by collaborating with all the users around the table, making sure that they were all aligned with their uh, idea of the organizational identity, but also even improve it. And lastly, they can even measure how it's perceived and improve. So you. When are you going to use the tool?